What's up everyone, Steven here from techmaker.tv. In this episode, I wanna take a quick look at polymorphic associations in Rails. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And since you're already here, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We're putting out tons of content on Rails, Ruby, and all sorts of other things. So uh, you don't wanna miss out on all of that. With that said, let's go ahead and jump in. So last week we were taking a look at Global ID and we set up a few models in a demo Rails app. And let me close some of these folders here. We'll open up the models folder again. And basically we had several different types of content and we had articles, we have forum posts, we have videos. And each one of these things had many comments. And what we ended up with in our database schema is a comment model that points at articles, forum posts, and videos explicitly. In many cases, this is fine, um, but there could be some other type of content that we wanna add. I mean, maybe, and again, I don't know, this is a fake app, so I don't know exactly what type of app this would even be, um, but suppose that we wanna add like a to-do item or something like that, and that to-do item can also have comments. Well, what we would have to do is come into our database once we add that to-do item and add a uh, to-do item ID here inside of our comments table. So every time we wanna add something that has comments to our app, we have to turn around and add a foreign key to the comments table. So we can do better than that though with uh, polymorphic associations, we can just add two things to our comments table and never have to worry about it again. To illustrate this, I'm gonna create a new thing called poly comments and that's gonna show us how this works. So over in my terminal, I'm gonna create a new model and I'm gonna call it poly comment like I was saying. So we're gonna say rails g model poly comments. And again, this is all fake. So obviously it doesn't make sense uh, in any sort of real app context. So we're gonna make poly comment and it's gonna have content, which is gonna be text just like our other comment. And instead of doing any sort of foreign keys, what I'm gonna do is say commentable. So uh, we're gonna have a new type of thing called commentable, which we'll get to in a minute. And I'm gonna say that this references, and then I'm gonna give it this weird thing here that you may or may not have seen before polymorphic at the end. So before we do anything, let's look at the migration that this generates once it's done. So now we have this migration file that gets added and you can see we have this T references commentable polymorphic true. So now let's run that migration and see what kind of table it generates. So rails db migrate and let's have a look at our schema once this finishes. Okay, so come over here and we scroll down to poly comments. So you'll see here that we have uh, two really important fields basically that get added to this poly comments table, commentable type and commentable ID. So essentially the way this is gonna work, like imagine that um, this field gets filled with like a, the name of a class or something like article or video or whatever. And then this gets an ID that corresponds to that model. So essentially that's everything that you need to look up uh, a record in the database, right? So using two fields instead of one, um, we can essentially magically figure out what we're trying to look up based on the data in here. And as we'll see in a second, Rails uses naming conventions very heavily to make this work. So let's take a look at um, how to set it up for the models and then let's create some records. So back over in the code, if we close these and we open up, um, let's go to poly comments. So you'll see here that this automatically got set up this way. It belongs to commentable polymorphic true. And then let's open up our article class. And so we have many comments. And what we wanna do here is say has many poly comments. And what I'm gonna go ahead and say here is as commentable. So I'm gonna save this and let's, before we do anything, let's, I always like to uh, kind of play around with things. So let's go ahead and go to our Rails console and let's see if we have any articles in the database. Uh, we may not, so there's one. So let's get the article equals article.first. 
Okay, I'm just gonna clear my console so we have our article here. And so now I can do article.poly comments. Okay, so and you can see here basically what's happening based on the name of the class. So look at this uh, query that's being generated. So it's trying to find something where the commentable ID is one and the commentable type is article. And this is happening based on naming conventions, as I said. So we have the article is the name of the class that we're trying to look up, the comment, poly comments for rather, and the ID is one. So if we come in here and we say uh, poly comments.new, and then we just give it some content, that's not gonna work. I don't know what I'm doing that for. We're gonna do poly comment.new, and then we'll give it content is testing this out. Okay, so that's gonna be our PC for short. And now what we can do is, so you can look at this and see that the commentable type is nil and the commentable ID is nil. So if I do article.poly comments and then append PC, now let's have a look at PC. So now it's got a commentable type of article, article and a commentable ID of one. So if we come over here and we grab this uh, same little snippet of code and we put this on forum post and we put this on video and let me make sure I save both of those and then let's go ahead and reload over here. Um, now if I look up video dot uh, first, I think there may be one in here. Um, we'll set that equal to video. And uh, now let me go ahead and clear that. Uh, Video.polycomments. And you can see here the same kind of thing, right? So we're looking stuff up where the commentable type is video. So that makes it really easy if you have something like, uh, again, like comments is a great example, um, where it could belong to many different objects that you don't actually have to modify the comments table to add new things that actually have comments. So. A lot of libraries use this, like active storage and things like that, um, where you're gonna have things that have file attachments, for example. Um, so, uh, and you don't necessarily wanna have to modify all sorts of things uh, to in your models to say, hey, you have a file attachment. You can just say, basically, uh, point at that polymorphic table, essentially. So, in any case, um, I think this is a really handy thing to know about. Um, and uh, it's been around for a long time, but it's quite cool. And I wanted to talk about, um, I think in the next episode, we may look at maybe how global ID and this could play together. Um, when, I made, when I made my global ID video, um, I was thinking about that and had a couple of other people comment on it. So we'll take a look at that um, and see what all kind of fun we can have there. But I think that's pretty much it for this video. It's pretty straightforward, um, but I wanted to make sure that I covered it before I got into anything else. So. Um, all of that said, um, if you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up, as I said at the beginning, and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and uh, I'll talk to you in the next episode.